Welcome to the Podcast 17 Greenlight Special. I am William, and today my co-host is Philip from Planet Philip. Hello, Philip. Hi, William. How are you doing? Good. Today we're going to be talking about Steam Greenlight, um, Valve's latest initiative to promote indie games and their latest system to get them on Steam. Uh, Greenlight allows Steam users to vote on their favorite indie titles. If the title gets enough votes, it's considered for the Steam distribution system. It seems, though, that this initiative is not only for indies, but also for mods. Um, so before we begin, we got three mod teams with us. Um, so we'll start with Matt. Matt, how about you introduce yourself, tell us who you are, what your mod is, and uh, I guess you're on the green light system now. Yeah, my name is uh, Matt Kazan. I go by Max. I am the project manager for No More Room in Hell. Uh, James? Yeah, my name is James, uh, or Minri on mod TV and stuff. I am the leader or co-leader of Cry Fear. Uh, I guess it's a horror mod to Half-Life 1. And Carlos? You guess. You mean you're not sure? <laughs> <laughs> I assure you, James, it is a horror mod for one. <laughs> he hasn't played it yet, so he's not sure. <laughs> Carlos Montero. I'm a project leader for Black Mesa. <laughs> so, uh, Cry Fear, No More Room in Hell, and Black Mesa were among the first ten uh, selected from the green light process. I mean, how does that make you guys feel? Was that exciting? Very. It was uh, pretty mind blowing. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's my eye. <laughs> so my first question, and the, the first thing, uh, I guess I'll start and then we'll hand over to Philip. The, my first question is really like, uh, I mean, we always thought Greenlight was for indies, but like I said, it's it's also now for mods, and it's kind of weird that mods are kind of in the system because even the button is like, I'd pay for this game when really mods are free to play. How did you guys know that you can use Greenlight for for your mod, or you know, what pressured you to to add it? And I guess I guess we'll start with Matt because. Uh, Matt from No More Room in Hell. Um, well, for our case, um, I mean, Greenlight had been announced, and, you know, there was so few details, right? It was just like, yeah, we're going to do this thing called Greenlight, and that was basically all they had said at that point. And so we were still kind of looking at the avenue of going with uh, Steve Marks, kind of like zombie panic and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so when we were down in QuakeCon uh, this past, like, the start of August, down in Texas, we had a chance to talk with Chet, so my PR manager, D-Man757, and my lead programmer, SSBA, had a chance to talk to him. And he straight up said to, to our guys, yeah, you know, put No More Room in Hell on Greenlight once it goes live. And, you know, we can use it as a test to see how well the service will work for mods. So even Valve wasn't entirely sure at that point how, you know, Greenlight would work with mods and not actual retail games. So... It, you know, was a big risk. We're just like, okay, we'll see how this goes. And we figured it'd be faster than trying to go with Steamworks because we had talked about for like six months about that and it didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel like guinea pigs, sort of? Big time. (laughs) Can I just interrupt here? Why do you say it was a big risk? I mean, what do you feel was risky about it? It seems to me that you had nothing to lose. Well... Yeah, I mean, I guess from a material standpoint, there was really nothing to lose except for, I mean, the game is still beta, right? Like, No More Room in Hell is still a beta product, and um, it's constantly a work in progress. And, like, our uh, page on Greenlight was a good example of people just blatantly mistaking it for a clone of Left 4 Dead <laughs> and labeling it as such, and then also not understanding that No More Room in Hell is completely free. So they would go, oh, this is another Left 4 Dead. Why would I pay for two game, like a game that I already have two of? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was kind of a risk for us um, alienating people almost accidentally. Mm-hmm. Carlos, what, what made you decide to put uh, Black Mesa Source on uh, green light? Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I saw the talk from QuakeCon uh, with Chet. Uh, there was a video online, and... A lot of people were asking him <laughs> about uh, Black Mesa and Greenlight. And, uh, <laughs> on your behalf, I'm sure. On my behalf, I guess, yeah. <laughs> and he didn't really say yes or no. Um, so, yeah, we waited oh, like a week, maybe eight days or nine days after the service had launched. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I was really unsure if we should do it or not. We had – yeah, we 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 were – really unsure if that's what the service was for or not, so we didn't really know if we, were, we should go that route. Um, yeah, like, for us, we, we didn't know if they were going to get us to sell. <laughs> yeah. Like, we didn't, we didn't know if they were, like, you know, we're putting it on there as a mod, and we didn't know if they were expecting us to charge money for it, 
So we didn't want to go through this whole process and then being like, okay, so now it's going to, you know, cost X number of dollars. And, you know, whoa, 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 wait a second. We wanted to give this thing away for free. <laughs> but luckily, I think they're on the same page. You know, they understand that we want, we just want people to play the game. Right. James, how'd you guys get CO, uh, COF on there? Uh, that's, uh, I wish I had like an interesting story about Kraken or something. I think <laughs> the honest answer is I don't really know. Um, <clears throat> It was just, I guess it was just put up in there as an interesting experiment. I mean, we've seen green light. We didn't really know what it was, and we still kind of don't particularly know what it is. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just chucked it up on there. We didn't do any PR or anything like, hey, both us on green light or anything like that. It's just one day it turned out it was on green light, and I, because I live with Andreas, yeah, the leader of Crowfear, and like a bromance kind of situation, um, <laughs> I, I knocked on his door. He kind of like, said, uh, like, we're, we're on green light. Like, do you know how fucking awesome this is? It's like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I like, found out about an hour ago. And then he just went <laughs> so you, got, you didn't actually put it on yourself. Somebody else put it on. Oh, no, Andreas put it on. Yeah, the other leader. Okay. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. okay. It sounds like the three of you were just sort of pissing in the wind to see which direction it would go. Well, <laughs> that yeah, sounds yeah. pretty good summary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Luckily, it didn't spray all over any of us, so I think we made it out okay. <laughs> I, was, I was half expecting them to take us all down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah no, no, so was I, I because there was no yeah. there was no outline for modifications or anything like that. And again, that button, the vote button, like yes, I will pay for this. When they changed it to that, I was like, this isn't suitable for mods. This doesn't make any sense. But whatever. Guess yeah, we what? had a lot of people posting on ours, being like, oh, I'm gonna have to pay money for this. I thought you said it would be free, sure. and we'd have to like you know every hour or so we'd have to write a post on our on our page because like no matter how many times we put it in big bold text in our description <laughs> that it's 100 percent free people don't notice it right because <laughs> uh, words why why read words i'm just gonna leave a comment <laughs> philip you got a uh, you got next question well i was wondering whether uh you guys paid the fee because i've only really just heard about the fee but it, it sounds like that you did it all pretty early enough because when i was doing a little bit of research i checked the numbers and there was like um, 3,000 games, we'll call them games for argument's sake, uh, submitted and, you know, 1,100 were banned. And that's when um, Valve decided to introduce the $100 submission fee, which seems a little bit steep to me, but uh, it'll obviously stop people from adding junk. And that was really the question. Did any of you guys pay for it? I did. Yeah, I'm glad oh, okay. you did. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. It, it's. It, <laughs> I was upset with myself. Basically, I had it all ready to go on green light. It was like, it was like three in the morning, and I was like, I'm too tired. I don't want to post this right now. I want to double check mm -hmm. it in the morning. <laughs> and then I woke up in the morning, and there was a hundred dollar fee. <laughs> oh, crap! <laughs> Bad luck. <laughs> that sucked. That, that uh, right sucked. on the cutoff. Yeah. <laughs> well, they changed. They changed it on like day three or something because of the amount of troll mods that were troll games that were getting on there. It was just ridiculous. But yes. they, could, they could at least refund it if you get accepted. I don't know. I mean, I know it's going to charity, but I mean, people who are making mods, that money could be spent on, you know, uh, buying people to do textures or modeling or something. I mean, I not everybody. Yeah, at least it went to charity. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I accept that. Deal, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask. Uh, uh, I guess James, would that be a big deal for Cry Fear? Would you guys still pay the hundred dollar fee? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, um. I, I, pro I guess we probably would. I mean, I'm really excited about Greenlight, but it's there's kind of varying mixed opinions on the team about Greenlight. Uh, so I personally would be very happy to do it. But uh, the thing is, I get the impression that Greenlight's more for games really than mods anyway. So I guess the hundred dollar fee is probably nothing if you're a company, because even yeah. I don't know about Carlos and Matt, but the email we got. Uh, Valve seemed to have the idea that it was a game rather than a mod. I don't think they really knew what it was. Um, they they kind of thought we might have been a, a proper company or something. So I but do you think that that was maybe just a generic email that they sent to everybody? And yeah, it probably was. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure. I think it was. All that stuff is yeah, just generic. Because I remember reading Thank you for your too, and we were like, wait a second, like some of the wording in this almost doesn't sound like it was talking about a mod. It definitely sounded like it was referring to a retail game. Mm -hmm. Well. Mm. They probably weren't expecting us all to be in the top ten. <laughs> that's, that's true. I, you know, because I think this is, you know, something for Valve. They can make money, obviously, on games being sold on Steam. So when when three of the top ten things that go on Greenlight are free, then, you know, they're kind of like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, um, ironically, Slender Source actually got on the top ten as well. It was, but they didn't add it. They added like the eleventh game instead of Slender Source. So What's that's that? sort of a, yeah, sort of weird how that all happened out. But anyway, um, so so I guess do you guys think that it needs to be more tailored to to mods? Then I guess we'll start with Carlos. Uh, is is the system basically is the system yes. broken for mods? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> still kind of crazy. I, I guess I still don't know where the end goal is. Like, are, <laughs> is my game going to go into a green light section of Steam, or is it going to be part of Steam proper? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know where this is all going. I, it's hard to say. Do <laughs> they even know where it's all going? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a little early to tell because you guys are just sitting in this green light queue. And it's like sort of we're literally in limbo. Right now. We're like in steam limbo. <laughs> I mean, this is the system's simple enough. It, if it would only take us a few small changes to make it more mod friendly, so if that ends up being a big thing, then sure, I guess that would be beneficial to yeah. everyone, right? Yeah. I think they need to separate it, though, as well. They're, they're, I mean, I'm not suggesting they have a, a mod green light and a game green light, but when you're looking through what's been accepted or what's been submitted, you certainly should be able to filter based on a number of different criteria, uh, type of game, and you know whether know. it's a mod or whether it's a, 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 an indie game. That would be nice. No, for sure. And maybe they should have a, so, like a separate list, the top ten games and then the top three mods or I something. Think, I, I think they're pretty smart. You know, staying agnostic as they are, because there's a lot of arguments to be made for what constitutes a mod nowadays, isn't there? Like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe they separate it to free to play then. Well, kind of like on <laughs> Steam Store now, you can sort by you know genre, price point, all that kind of stuff, right? Just have yeah, exactly. that same filter feature in yeah. Greenlight. There's, there's a point at which uh, the only difference between a mod and a game is did you buy a license for the engine or not? Right. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so my next question, I guess, is uh, what do you guys think of? Because the previous system for mods were just basically sending an email out to the Steam group, try to get yourself on Steamworks. But now it seems like uh, the selection process is, the hand, is in the hands of the customers. Do you guys think that's a good idea? Do you think Valve uh, did the right thing, sort of shifting the focus or saying, you know, this is what we deal with day to day, so now you guys can do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I definitely think part of it was to offload some of the pressure from their end, you know what I mean? They have enough to deal with as it is. Yeah. But putting it in the hands of the pressure, but it makes it really clear what the consumers want, right? That's true. true. That's good. James, anything from you? I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It's um, From what I heard, I don't know if this is true or not. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that Revelations 2012 game mm-hmm. that got accepted on Steam. And I, I don't want to... I don't want to... Uh, Come on, James, you can say it's a load of shit. Yeah, okay, it's atrocious. <laughs> it's atrocious. <laughs> and I think Valve got a bit of backlash about that. Like, uh, what other games like, I don't know, Minecraft out there that aren't on Steam, but this terrible piece of shit is on Steam. So it might have been slightly reactionary to that. I'm not entirely sure. I, I have to look this game up. Oh, man, you... you <laughs> and any listener out there who haven't oh, seen Oh, holy crap, I've seen this. Yeah, I know what this is. This is terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, Philip? Well, I mean, I, I'm not particularly f- uh, supportive of the idea of popularity because you only need to see what type of newspapers or what type of television shows that are watched or bought or read by people to know that the popularity certainly doesn't always um, match with quality. So... I kind of feel that there should be like, you know, like a limit. It shouldn't just be what people vote on because really, you know, some of the things people vote on are just terrible, really, because they get all their friends and their friends' friends. So hopefully, you know, the community will be able to control it, but it might snowball where just, you know, shit gets to the top. And what are Valve going to do then? Are they going to have to say, okay, we've decided not to do this, uh, we've decided not to release it and go against your wishes, and then there could be a bit of a problem there. I don't know. Yeah, there's plenty of examples of that, right? In pop yeah. culture, like people uh, voting what to name a section of the space station, and they just pick the most ridiculous name because Reddit got behind it or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, the internet isn't happen. really the best. <laughs> the internet, it, yeah. <laughs> it's not the best, like, uh, cross section of, you know, humanity. 
It's not a very good representation of, of what people have to offer, generally speaking. Well, I, I want to pick on Carlos for a second, uh, because uh, Black Mesa is probably one of the biggest names in, in modding history Great. at this point. But, but like, what what do you think? How do you think uh, the smaller mod groups uh, will will get their their spotlight in green light when competing with mods like Black Mesa Source? Well, I mean, Valve's doing some stuff purposely very differently than other people do, right? Like the front page of green light is not a popularity contest. It doesn't just no, show not, the yeah. most popular mods. So I think they're trying to give everyone a fair shake at it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, if you want, if you think you deserve to be on Steam, then they expect you to be at a certain level of popularity, right? They want the best stuff on there, so mm-hmm. you have to you have to get yourself there one way or the other on your own terms. Mm-hmm. So yeah, how do you, how do you do that? that? I mean, for the smaller ones, how do they do that? I don't know. <laughs> it's it's a marketing, tough one, right? It? You have to, you have to get your name out there however you can. There's, there's a lot of different yeah. ways. James, how did uh, I'm not to say that your mod is small or anything. Not to say that your mod is small, James. But how did uh, Cry of Fear get so many votes in so little time? What did you guys do? Uh, I wish I could answer that question. Um, truthfully, I have no idea. Literally no idea. Um, I mean, we're gonna, we're it's gonna really great for from my perspective. That's really great because that means it's kind of working. Like just the fact that they had a, a fair shake at it and that a lot of people saw their game on Greenlight, mm-hmm. even though they weren't necessarily very popular at first. Sure, they got up there anyway, so that's great. And and Matt, did you guys do any PR outside of uh, Greenlight to to get the votes you needed? I think really our only PR was on um, a news post we did for 1.05, our last update. We had a, a button that said, you know, vote for us on green light. And uh, when we released 1.05, we had the clever idea of including a button on the main menu that said, uh, vote for uh, vote us on the Steam, like mm-hmm. right above, like the, you know, play options, all that stuff. But by the time we launched 1.05, by the time we actually released it, we were already greenlit. So... <laughs> kind of defeated the whole point of having that there. <laughs> Are you going to take it off now? Yeah, I think we're going to have to remove it the next version. <laughs> <laughs> so, Philip? Yeah. Well, I mean, now that you're on, have you had to make any changes? I mean, I don't know how far the process has gone. I know you've been accepted, but were there any technical changes that you needed to make to the mod itself? Not yet. We haven't had to make changes yet. We're still in the process of, like, you know, we had to sign the NDAs and everything to get the Steamworks SDK license. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, still pretty early. Yeah, the actual technical side of things hasn't really begun. Yet. Okay. Okay. I mean, when is it due on? August, uh, October the fifteenth. Is that when no, they're all going to be that's released? When the next, yeah. That's when the next uh, group is getting chosen. The next group. Of oh, okay. Green so when people. when do these when do you guys go live then? It's I think it's well, more to do ready. with... Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's you have to like sign contracts help, right? and do all this software work, yeah. yeah. Because, like, they send us an email, and we reply to their email within, you know, less than 24 hours, right? Like, oh, sign, sign these contracts or answer some questions and take care of that stuff. And then, you you know, Valve, they're, they're really busy people. So we had to wait quite a while for them to then respond to our response. And I'm sure it's the same for you guys as well. Yeah. Like they're they're really busy, and so it's not easy to just go back and forth with them, right? It's not like you're just having a face to face conversation. Yeah, especially mm-hmm. if you have any questions and stuff. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so what sort of? I mean, you guys told us that uh, they sent you the NDAs and contracts, but before you guys were actually greenlit, was there much uh, Valve participation? Did you guys hear from them at all, or? Nope. No. As a <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I was going to follow up that question. It's with, hard to get their attention. Yeah, oh yeah definitely. You know. well, I was going to follow up your question, William, with um, did they ask you to make any changes? But you've just answered that already, so <laughs> no. no changes. So there's been a lot of questions right now, or a lot of uh, discussion, because Steam Greenlit sort of seemed like it was rushed out the door, um, and it's sort of an ongoing iterative process for Valve, it sounds like. What would you guys change from the whole process? And I'll start with Carlos. Is there anything you would change from the whole system? Um, right now, no. I think Valve's doing it doing it right. They're, they have openly said that this is an experiment, 
Mm-hmm. They expect to change it. They are they're basically performing a science experiment. They're watching the results and they're going to tweak and fine tune it. And I think that's a great approach. They've I feel like they've looked at other stores and stuff. They've looked at the App Store and they've looked at the Android Store and they purposely structured themselves differently uh, to see what happens, basically, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think it's a great approach. So I am pretty confident that. Uh, that they'll make the changes that they need to make to make this work well for what it's intended to work well for. Mm. James, how about you? Anything that you would change? Yeah, I think I'd have a bit more clarity towards the actual developers themselves. What do you actually get out of this? Because I'm still not entirely sure. (laughs) Um, I don't know what I can and can't say because I haven't signed an NDA yet. Um, You haven't signed anything yet. You could just say anything. Say everything. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) <laughs> um, but yeah, because I'm kind of, I guess there's the obvious kind of it's like you're on Steam being the main one, but um, I don't know what kind of what kind of support you get from Valve, um, and maybe some more clarity towards the community, uh, the problem that Number Room in Hell had with people not realizing it's going to be free, maybe some kind of category, maybe free mods uh, or free games subdivided to like free or pay, mm-hmm. just t- just small changes really. And, and Matt, anything that you would change? Yeah, the one thing that we found pretty frustrating was uh, when submitting something to Greenlight, you can't create, you know, an entity that would represent your team oh, and use that to submit your mod or your project to Greenlight. So really, one of our PR guys, Zendrid, he was the one who added No More Mattel onto Steam. Like, I was at work. It was the middle of the day when it went live. Like, I think it was like noon or 2 o'clock or something when it finally went live. And uh, so he added it onto Steam, and it was listed under his name. Mm-hmm. Like it said, you know, added by Zendrid. And so we kind of realized, we're like, well, what the fuck? Is there any way we can tie this then to our Steam developer group or something like that? And that wasn't an option. So he had to go change his Steam name to NMRH Dev Team. <laughs> so, like, he's going around playing games, having conversations, you know, doing whatever you would do on Steam as NMRH Dev Team. So it looks great on our green light profile because it says submitted by our NMRH dev team. But, I mean, it's still it's inconvenient for him. And then no one else on the team has administrator or moderator rights or whatever on the actual uh, green light listing. Right. So it yes. would have been nice if they had had a feature where, you know, you could add people like Steam uh, IDs or whatever or a Steam group. Yeah, or like groups, yeah. Yeah, to be that a moderator. That would have been pretty nice. Or, I was getting like a hundred friend invites a day. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of the downside. Like, and then you have to click ignore, ignore for each and every one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so he was telling me, he's like, yeah, I'm getting hundreds of invites like every single day. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a question. You know, like with the new profiles and stuff, do you guys get like messages too whenever somebody comments on your green light? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. There's a little inbox counter. Yeah. It's like a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's brutal. I've noticed that uh, a lot more indie co- companies now um, are starting to create like separate Steam profiles. Can you do that, or like, I just get well, into a whole new Steam yeah, account? I guess we could have. I, I think the point he was making was that at the time yeah. we had no idea. Sure, sure, sure. Like it was the same for me. I just posted it, and then oh look, my name's up there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <Oops. laughs> um, James, I got a question before I hand it over to Philip, just to follow up on. Uh, on your previous answer. Um, Cry of Fear seems to be really into, uh, I wouldn't say DLC, but you know, you guys are doing your different chapters and uh, kind of like what Amnesia does and your auto updater. So now that you're on Greenlight, how does that change your outlook on your development? Like, are you going to be throwing out your auto updater and just focusing on Steam Workshop if it works that way? Yeah, I think uh, it definitely makes it easier for me as a programmer because I, the thing is, our auto update it's not really that good. I mean, when you download a patch, it doesn't know what previous versions you have. So every patch is an all-inclusive from patch 1.1 to 1.55. Mm-hmm. Um, so even if it's just like a a quick fix like 1.55 was, I realized I left something in the code that I shouldn't have, and it was actually like a megabyte patch, but it, because it was all-inclusive, it was about 600 megabytes. <laughs> um, and I guess, yeah, I guess it allows us to push out... Uh, uh, updates a lot faster. Mm-hmm. Um, I can do away with the auto updater because it's a bit crappy. Um, yeah, and uh, I think 
there might possibly be some other improvements as well. I don't know if we'll get Steamworks because it's Half-Life 1, but possibly some engine improvements. It, it depends on what Valve says. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a big point, too, with the engine improvements and everything. Um, and, uh, and, of course, for Black Mesa, Carlos, when you guys eventually release the, the Zen chapters, I mean, hopefully you can take a, take part in the Green, uh, or, I guess, workshop, so you can push that out automatically as well. Yeah. It was it was it was a little upsetting because like um, Greenlight and BMS were pretty much announced or relatively the same time span, but uh, unfortunately you guys had to release outside of Greenlight. I think a lot of people were expecting BMS to debut on Greenlight. Maybe that would have solved some mm-hmm. of the distribution problems, but you guys got that. That would have been nice. We we really had no idea. Like yeah. we announced that we were going to launch, you know, the date and everything, and then Greenlight just happened around the same time mm-hmm. and. We weren't even sure if we were going to use it or not, and then we got on there, and all of a sudden, oh yeah, we got greenlit. It's, it was a crazy coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we would have planned it differently if, if we had any idea that any of that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the lot, yeah, I got a couple of questions that are kind of linked. I mean, the the first one would be going back to what was said earlier about the auto updater. I mean, can you see yourself actually having to maintain two distributions? One, mm. for Joe Public, who doesn't want to use or doesn't know how to use Steam for downloading mods, and the other one for, you know, uh, Green Light. Can you see that happening? Um, if it does happen, uh, I will probably release updates a lot less frequently to for the mod version. It'll probably mm-hmm. be like, once we get to a point where we've distributed X amount of updates on Steam, we'll just throw it all together and have a big update on the on the mod. Um, but I guess a good kind of litmus, litmus test uh, for this kind of stuff is our Facebook page. We can just ask, put a poll up, um, oh, what do you think of this or that? So if there's not really yeah. enough demand for um, keeping the mod version maintained, I won't even bother doing that. Um, we, it's enough. probably more likely we will just 100% switch to Steam. It's possible too. I don't. I don't know what's in the NDA. Uh, I'm just 100% speculating, but it's possible that that Valve might say, you know, you can't distribute outside of Steam now that you're on Steam. Yeah. Ooh. Because there's free to play games now. I mean, I'm thinking of Lord of the Rings Online. So if we check Lord of the Rings Online, which is which used to be free to play on itself and uh, and is now free to play on Steam, can you get Lord of the Rings Online outside of Steam? Uh, pretty sure um, you can. Yeah, uh, so so maybe that's that's a good. Uh, it would be quite hard for them to suddenly say if you choose green light, you have to use it exclusively. That would be. Uh, yeah, I'm that would be pretty hard. Yeah. Mm. And in fact, that was really my next question. If uh, we were talking, you know, three months down the line, and and you hadn't released anything, this is a question open to all all of you guys. Would you have chosen to use green light as your initial release? Or do you see Greenlight as an addition to a, a standard distribution model? I think for some projects, um, going straight from nothing to Greenlight would probably be really hard to gain recognition. I know for us, for No More Room in Hell, and uh, I'm the same probably goes for Cry of Fear, that already having these releases um, before Greenlight happens, like before Greenlight actually went live, built us up, built our community, built recognition, got our name out there. So when it came to getting our stuff on Greenlight, that is how we ended up in the top 10 and the first yeah. one to be Greenlight was because Absolutely. we already had people who knew of us. Whereas if we didn't have that, um, you know, early advantage, that head start, I don't think you would be seeing us on there right now. No, that's, that's fair enough. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I see that. If, if people don't know about you, then they can't, you know, they can't vote you up. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, if you release a mod release, not on Steam, if you consider it more as like a <clears throat> kind of a game just for people who know about mods, then you're going to get some, and then you can compare it to Steam, which is more like anyone can use it. You'll get some good feedback from the mod version, so that when you do yeah. eventually go on Steam, you will have yeah, a lot better... Yeah, it's almost like a beta release. <laughs> yeah, exactly. a better product. And do you think that's how people will view it now, that they're, re- they're released directly... And they'll consider that a beta, or beta, as William likes to say. And then um, only when they feel it's ready will they, you know, submit to green light. 
I think that'll be the case for some. I know, you know, with Greenlight being there, a lot of people will look at it as a huge advantage for them, and they'll jump right to try and Greenlight. And I, there is a very dangerous possibility, and we've already kind of seen it, the Greenlight will just get flooded with mm. with games. I mean, there is that $100 application fee now, so I guess only people who are serious will go that route. But there are still a lot of people who are very serious about the projects they're making, whether or not those projects, you know, are quality or not, or whether they even have a chance of being completed or not. People will still look at that as, like, their big shot, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's interesting. It's like, I mean, it's hard to say what people are going to do, whether they're a retail game or an indie game on Kickstarter or whatever. But I think the smart people will will go that route. <laughs> yeah. And they'll use it as a as a litmus test and they'll they'll get a lot of good feedback from it. I do agree. You, you know, do you feel like you guys are now uh in terms of public relations uh spreading yourselves out too thin? Um because now not only do you have mod DB profiles, Facebook profiles, Twitter profiles, you know, what what have you, you also now have to manage, you know, a green light page. Is that something extra that is sort of a pain in your ass or or is it okay? Do you guys not care? No, it's all right. It's yeah. pretty much the same. You know, when you do one, you might as well be doing ten. It's a couple extra clicks, but yeah, it's the same message that you're keeping. Yeah, yeah, it's the same message that you're spreading across all the platforms. Okay. Twitter is really the only one. one so you, have to, you know, you only have like 140 characters, but for everything else, you can just copy and paste. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, have you given much? Um, not given much. Have you? Have you? Responded much to the green light comments? I mean, gosh, <laughs> you've got like twenty thousand. <laughs> I mean, I, I presume know. you haven't read them all, but um, I mean, it's been pretty good. I, it, it hasn't been just me. It's been a lot of my team members and stuff on there. So yeah, I, I think we we tried. <laughs> yeah, we, we tried to answer a lot of the repetitive questions and stuff too. Yeah. And now you guys are uh, are basically you, you basically have the discussions as well. I just noticed this actually. Um, you have your comments on your profile, and then you actually also have the discussions, which is sort of Valve's new way to integrate the forums into Steam. Um, yeah, I like that actually. That's just, that's a nice addition. Yeah, so it's good. It's cool. Um, uh, Philip, you got anything else? No, not at this point. I want to hear what you say. I like to, I like to have counter questions to your. I know. I'm starting. I'm starting to run out of questions for these guys. But uh, I mean, go on, okay. I mean, one of the questions I was going to ask, but it's kind of been answered, is that do you think that there will be any, uh, you know, negative aspects? And of course, maintaining two distributions was one of those. Do you think that there'll be there'll be anything else? Well, I think. I mean, one of the downsides is. I don't know if this is actually going to be the case because, again, we don't know a lot about how Greenlight actually works. But, you know, for the for the projects that were put on through Steamworks, like when they would complete a, a patch, and uh, they would have to submit it to Valve. And then it would have to basically be approved by Valve before it gets pushed out on Steam. And that could take a while. Like, uh, I know I'd heard, you know, the Zombie Panic and some of the other ones that, you know, they submit, and they literally had to wait around for a few weeks uh, at least, like, before Valve would authorize the patch. So that is kind of a, a downside there to, you know, you can't quickly get your patch out when you want to get it out. You kind of plan ahead and give yourself some, like, leeway time. But then again, I don't actually know if that's the way it's going to work with Greenlight because, once again, we don't know all the details. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, do you think that um, people will create mods specifically for green light and what I mean by that is uh, not like fake mods or silly mods but mods that they say right from the beginning I'm, I'm just going to make something only for green light I'm not going to distribute it anywhere else and I'm going to focus on people on the green light section if that's yeah, not a stupid question definitely because it's it's that kind of almost a ticket into valve I mean it's obviously not but it's kind of like as close as valve you can get to as a modder, so it's kind of like an idealistic view to um, have something that's going to go straight and green line. Valve's going to notice it like this. Particularly people who want to join Valve as a company, I think it's probably going to be seen as like an easy avenue or an easier avenue. Yeah, I agree with that. This. I got I mean, people. Sorry, sorry, very quickly. I mean, people are. 
<laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'm going now. It seems that um, your, uh, um, you're guaranteed Valve reviewing it, aren't you? You know, yeah, it, yeah. if you put it on, if you put it on green light, no matter how shite it is, <laughs> and if you've paid your hundred bucks, somebody at green light, uh, somebody at Valve is going to have to play the damn thing. And if it's what you hope it really is, true. I don't know if oh, they really? play it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just I kind you of assumed that... green light. Well, maybe if you get accepted okay. onto green light. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't clear there. I mean, if you get if you get enough votes and you get accepted, I mean, I assume that somebody plays it. I mean, surely. Do you think that's not the case? Funny, funny you mentioned that, Phil, because, <laughs> you know, I got a story about Black Mesa Source. I don't know if Carlos knows this. Um, Vic and I from Lambda Generation, oh. we emailed, uh, <laughs> we emailed uh, uh, Eric Wopaw, um and asked him if he's played Black Mesa Source yet and, uh, and Mark Laidlaw. And Mark said, I'm just going to wait till it's out on green light. <laughs> that's what he told us. <laughs> so, uh, Robin Walker said the same thing to me. So oh, there you go. <laughs> They're not even playing it, Phil. They don't even give a shit. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. We get the same thing with no more room in hell. <laughs> oh, it looks awesome. That looks so cool. I can't wait to play it when it's on green light. Oh, but you know it's available now. You can get it from our website, right? Nah, I'll just wait till uh, it's on wait. <laughs> they didn't even That's know what like Angry Mod was on. It's going to be viral, isn't it? Have you played this? Nah, green light it, mate. <laughs> Everybody's going to say the same. I got a, I got a more general question for you guys because you guys seem to, you guys seem to mod because you, you absolutely love modding. I mean, Black Mesa Source is, is a recreation of a classic game. No more room in hell. You guys, it sounds like you guys are just having fun in Cryo Fear. I mean, you guys haven't even moved from Half Life One Engine. That's how much you love modding. But uh, um, there's been an ongoing discussion over on Podcast Seventeen whether the modding, modding for modding's sake, is officially over with, like the additions of things like Green Light and Kickstarter. And it seems like uh, you know, back five, five, ten years ago, modding was sort of a stepping stone for developers. You know, they they got their feet yet wet with modding. But now it almost sounds like people are using mods and in indie games as you know, full-blown development, like with Kickstarters and stuff. Do you guys think that that whole era of modding for fun or hobbyist modding is 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 ending? I think it's becoming yeah. dangerously close to heading in that direction. I don't think we're quite there yet, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's fun. Like, I work in the video game industry professionally, and mm-hmm. um, it's, you know, it's a lot of fun working in video games, but I also do modding just for fun, and I think <laughs> the problem is a lot of people start going into just for the money. And that's when problems arise, because then you end up like you know Activision or something, right? You don't you don't want to be like not that extreme, but like you know once once it becomes all about the money, like doing things through Kickstarter and and, and trying to like sell everything and trying to make money, it kind of robs the artistic ingenuity of the whole process. Carlos, I mean, yeah. all you guys work in the industry actually uh, now, which is uh, you guys are like the success stories for the for the Half Life community scene, but but Carlos. Host the boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that yeah, it's it's probably dying, but it's not dead yet. I, this I would guess it's at least seventy five percent of my team is is not professional. Mm-hmm. They they That's just do this for fun. They have other jobs. They come home and do this for fun every night for. I thought guys are in school still. A couple of years. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I actually Robert don't have Yang. a lot of, There's not a lot of students on my team anymore, and the people who have stayed with us the longest have either become professionals or they're just hobbyists and they still do this for fun. Yeah. That's how I got started. Robert Yang. That's, sorry. that's how I think this whole thing got started. All, all the mod stuff got started was people having fun, first and foremost. You know. It's a very educational process. Go, go for it, Philip. I know you're going to talk about the people's history. I know that's what you're going to mention, right? About what? The people's history on Rock, Paper, Shotgun. Oh, well, I had lunch with Robert a couple of weeks ago, and he told me that he was about to release a three-part series. Yeah, that's up now. So, okay. Um, and I don't know, which part has he um, published? All of them. The, the first part is called The Wad, which goes over oh, the history okay. of Quake modding, basically, and how people were just doing it for fun. And then there's The Mod, which goes over the silver years, and The Post Mod, which is all about Minecraft and Greenlight and Kickstarters and stuff. So um, it's, it's an excellent read, and it goes over sort of this transition in modding. Um, 
I, although James didn't answer the question, I, I really want to hear what James has to say because um, he also works in the industry, but he still mods for fun. Do you think the modding for modding's sake is, is over? Or? Oh, I don't think so. I mean, I think every medium has that, oh, X or Y is, is dying or is dead. I mean, you get yeah. it for PC gaming, you get it for console gaming, you get it for music, you get it for film. I don't think so. I mean, it's going a different direction, but that's what everything does. Um, it certainly, there's a danger of becoming less serious. I mean, personally, I now that we're going to be put on Steam, I can't add unserious messing about things in Firefair anymore. Um, but I mean, not everyone is in it for the money or the fame. So I mean, as long as you have those people around, modding won't disappear as a, I suppose, a indie art form. Mm. Actually, you brought up a good question that I have now for Matt. And Matt, do you now have to regulate yourself? Because No More Room in Hell is known as the game that has children zombies. Because nobody else had <laughs> children zombies because it was beyond immoral. Will Will No More Room in Hell remove children zombies now that you guys are greenlit? No, we're gonna add in baby zombies now. We're gonna take it one step further. No, kid zombies are gonna stay in the game because you know some people looked at it as like this big shocking thing. But when I think about what we were trying to do with No More Room in Hell is we weren't trying to make, like, a zombie shooter. We are trying to make a first-person, like, survival horror experience. It's still a game, so it's still a gamey aspect, and it's still fun, but it's supposed to be, like, this, like, sense of, like, dread and fear and, and tension, and these kid zombies do an excellent job of that. Like, any time you're playing in the game, if you guys play, have played No More Room in Hell, you'll see when a kid zombie shows up, people usually start screaming. And they freak out about it, and they panic. Oh, I'm out of ammo, fuck, you know, whatever. And kid zombies are ruthless, they're brutal, and, you know, like you said, we're the, really the only game with kid zombies, and, you know, they're not kids, they're zombies. they are got to try and make that <laughs> clear to people. They're not, they're not children anymore, <laughs> they're monsters. What if, hypothetically, and I know this is like uh, me just really pulling shit out of the air, but what if, hypothetically, Valve says you have to take X out of your game if you want to be greenlit? What do you do then? That was going to be my question. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they asked us to remove things, say, you know, if there was, like, copywritten, like, logos or, you know, anything like that that happened to me in the game, then, you know, we might take this, those things out. But if they asked us to remove the kids, I'd probably say go screw yourselves because it's a big part of our game. And I'm not going to water down the substance of the game to satisfy them. How about you, James? Excellent. Yeah, how about you, James? Because James, uh, Cry of Fear approaches on some, uh, on some, some things that you wouldn't necessarily see in, in AAA games either, so. Yeah, but it, most of it's only hinted about, I mean, there's the pedophilia thing in the apartments, but there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing explicit. Yeah. I think that the, 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 um, the main thing we have to worry about is copyright stuff. I've got some Coca Cola bottle props and some head and shoulders and stuff like that, so um, that's the main thing I'm worried about, uh, just copyright the stuff. But um, if, if Valve wants us to change big things like the way you kill the boss at the end, the last boss, right. um, I, I wouldn't want it to be on green light. Fair enough. I mean, Carlos, the, the question doesn't really apply to you, because if they tell you to take it off, you can just say, well, why don't you take off Half-Life? <laughs> 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 but it's the same goes for you, I guess. If it, I mean, I, go, I know you guys added a lot of dialogue, and some of it was hilarious, but uh, they asked you to remove some of those little things? Yeah, we'd probably do it. I mean, in the end, we're trying to remake Half-Life as we kind of feel they would have made it, so... Okay. If they think something's inappropriate or could be done better, we're probably going to want to do that. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so I think, it, I mean, Philip, do you have any other questions? I think we can close up. You ready? To no, up? you've stolen all my good ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go around and uh, we'll start with James. Why don't you tell people where they can find out more about Cry of Fear and follow you guys and all that stuff? Yep. So uh, you can either check us out on Facebook, and I don't remember the URL, but just look up Cry of Fear on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> Thankfully, the main website is easy to remember. It's just cryofear.com with hyphens instead of spaces, obviously. Um, and that's pretty much the best place. Or head to ModDB, search up cryofear. Um, not blowing my own trumpet or anything, but it's usually in the top five. So you don't even have to search. You just click on the main page <laughs> and it'll be there. Um, I think that goes for all of us, actually. Yeah, yeah it is, actually. Um, that's why you're here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matt, where can people find out more about Noma Roman Health? 
Uh, you can find out more about No More Room in Hell at www.nmrih.com, which is our website, or on our MonDB profile. Just look up No More Room in Hell on MonDB. We're, I think, right now number two in popularity, but we're usually in the top five as well. And um, we're just right behind Black Mesa. And we also have a Facebook page. Just look up No More Room in Hell on Facebook. And, Carlos, I, I don't know if anybody doesn't know where to find Black Mesa Source, but why don't you tell us anyway? <laughs> Just head to blackmesasource.com. <laughs> and with that said, you can also find them all on Green Lights. Hopefully, we'll see them released um, any day now. I don't know. This year. Maybe, <laughs> maybe before <laughs> the next. Maybe before the next rounds. We have no idea. But, uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's true. We'll no, vow time. Me. You know, yeah. <laughs> his way down to Green Light. That would oh, be really <laughs> <laughs> And thanks for listening. And we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.